Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make slow roasted chicken thighs. If you've never had chicken cooked like this, you'll be amazed at how good it tastes and how easy it is to prepare. It's also really good for you, so make sure that you get the ones that have our bone in with the skin on. Uh, that won't be a problem as you'll see during the cooking. I've got a pack here that's probably got 10 or 12, I'm guessing 3 or 4 pounds. And to cook it in, I have got my cast iron enamel coated roaster with a very tight fitting lid. If you don't have one of these, you can use a normal roasting pan uh, that's covered. Just make sure that you check it during the cooking to make sure that the liquid does not boil off. First step here is just get your chicken rinsed and in the roaster. I just have this uh, towel here to make sure I don't scratch my counter. So I'm just going to briefly rinse each thigh in some cold water here and just place it in the pan. So I've got the chicken in here rinsed. I'm not going to be putting any additional water and just going to cover this up and put it in uh, my oven that I've preheated to 325. I'm going to cook this for two hours at which point I'm going to take it out and separate off the fat with a gravy separator. It's been two hours and I do time this one so I got my setup ready here. I've got my gravy separator um, with a plate underneath to catch any drippings. This one doesn't leak but I don't take chances. It's kind of cool. Um, just pull up the button there and it drains out the bottom and this catches the big pieces. And I've also got a plate and a spoon because the easiest way to get the gravy out to separate it is by taking the chicken out. And you can see there is quite a bit of fat on top but that's not going to be a problem. It's going to end up being a very lean sauce. Now you notice you can see that the skin is starting to fall apart. That's fine because in this recipe what's important is that the connective tissues from the skin and the bone are going into the gravy which you're going to end up eating with the chicken um, which is extremely nutritious and since I'm going to take the fat off now it's actually pretty low calorie to boot. I could use a strainer but I just find it plates easier and what I do is just hold it with a spoon and let the excess juices run back into the pan. Set that aside for a minute. Now you definitely want an oven mitt for this part. So I've got my oven mitt in my pan and I'm just going to spoon all of this carefully into the separator. Yeah I really like this model because it's got the strainer on the top that catches any little bits and that way you don't have to fish them out of the gravy off here. And I just will show you the bottom of the pan briefly here so you can see that yeah there's hardly anything left there's like a little dab of fat on the side here so this is going to be quite lean. So while the um, gravy is separating I'm just going to gently pour the meat back in. You can see it's already getting really, really tender. Now, the skin will not actually crisp. You can do that at the end if you want, simply by leaving the lid off. Um, I just find it more tender and flavorful like this. But again, as I always say, it's your dinner. Do with it what you want. Now, I will get a quick close-up on the gravy here. So I just put this on the shelf above the stove so you can get a good close look at it. That uh, yellow layer on the top is all the fat, okay? Um, the bottom cloudy part is the gravy that has got all the nutrients from the bones and the skin in it that will go back into the dish. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So if you got one like this, what you do is just push the button and you'll notice that the gravy drains out of the bottom, I guess, sort of like 
oil in a crankcase and you do have to kind of keep an eye on it so you don't um, let all the fat back in just pop the lid back on it I'm going to put this back in for another hour at which point it will be completely cooked and the meat will be falling off the bone. So the final hour of cooking time is up. Let's take a look at this. Get a good zoom in here. Now as you can see, there's not that much sauce left. There is some. And let's pick up one here. You can see it's kind of fallen off the bone, which is what you want. If you had wanted more sauce, um, you can add some water halfway through. Yeah, you can see this is just falling apart right now, which is great. Um, so there you have it. Slow roasted oven chicken. I really do hope you give this a shot. It really is good. Uh, you can serve this with basically nearly any sauce. Uh, you can cool it, take the meat off the bone, make really good chicken soup with this. Whatever you want. Anyways, there it is. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.